Hello and welcome to the Duquesne Sports Pregame Show here on the Duquesne Student Television Station. I'm Jack Morgan. Alongside me is Dylan Fister. Today we're going to preview round two of the A-10 tournament between Duquesne and St. Louis. And St. Louis comes into this one having won their last time out in the first round against Rhode Island. And really, all of yesterday's games in the first round were fantastic. I mean... All, the, all three games came down to the wire. The SLU versus Rhode Island game was no exception. And St. Louis wins the right to face a very tough Duquesne team. But St. Louis, they've got a lot of star power on their end, especially with the guards. They definitely do, Jack. And when I looked at St. Louis, I looked at how they were falling, uh, where they were ranking in the A-10. And the two things that popped out to me were they're, they're ranked fourth in the A-10 in offense and 15th in defense. Now, it's a big difference there. Obviously, coming into this game, it's going to be an offensive heavy performance from them. Now, the big matchup that I'm excited to watch, Jack, is actually going to be that Duquesne defense facing up against that St. Louis offense. Because the Dukes, they rank fourth defensively compared to the fourth overall ranking of the St. Louis offense. And now, like you said, they're coming off strong performances, uh, or a strong performance against URI. Gibson Jimerson led the team on offense, and then Bradley Azwiro led the team with 11 rebounds. They've got a lot of momentum going, a lot of offensive momentum, momentum off the board, and I think that it's going to show against the Dukes. Yeah, um, Gibson Jimerson, for the record, 26 points in that game against Rhode Island. He also ended up with five assists. He played 39 minutes. He played, he played all but one. And when you get to that time of the year, you're going to see that more often. A lot of guys laying it all, all out on the line. We'll switch to Duquesne real quick because Duquesne found themselves in a similar spot to this last year. They had to wait a day. They had that single bye. And now they head into this, and they got the chance to play, they got the chance to play LaSalle last year. They fell to them, and it didn't look like they were prepared. Next, the next year around, they get that same opportunity, except against a St. Louis team who's actually ranked worse than LaSalle was last year. And St. Louis is not a team you should overlook. And Duquesne, maybe the second time around, maybe they're more careful with this, Dylan. I think they definitely will be more careful, Jack. And that's why I think they're going to come out of this victorious. A little early game pick there for you. But that big matchup of Duquesne's defense against against St. Louis's offense, I think the Dukes are going to win that matchup. And not only are they going to win that matchup, but they're going to win on their offensive side of the ball as well. And I think that for two reasons, and their names are Jimmy Clark and Day Day Grant, both coming off of big performances against GW. Because like St. Louis... The Dukes have some momentum of their own. You know, Jimmy and Day Day were great offensively. And then strong rebounding performances as well from the Dukes. We saw Trey Williams and Dave Dixon both had seven rebounds. So, again, we're seeing momentum from both sides here. And I think the Dukes are going to learn the lesson from last time. They're not going to underestimate their opponent. They're going to respect St. Louis's similar momentum. I think it's going to be a fair matchup. But I think the Dukes will learn their lesson this time around. And last time these two teams played, it was actually in Duquesne at the Coop. And Duquesne came out on top 81-66. to They got out to a fast start. They ended up leading after one half of basketball by a score 41-27. to And it just felt like they were able to run away from it, run away with it from that point on. And to be honest, that when you come out in an A-10 tournament, uh, conference tournament for that, for that matter, where you've played, you haven't played, um, in a few days, but the team already has played, and they're kind of in that groove with the momentum. They just got a win the night before. For Duquesne, how important is it for them to get out to a fast start? It's definitely really important, Jack, and I'm just I'm going to jump right into it. I already mentioned them, but Day Day Grant and Jimmy Clark, those are my players to watch. And the main reason that I say this is because of those performances the last time out against St. Louis. Last time out, Day Day Grant had 31 points. It was that Big game for him this year when everybody was like, wow, Day Day Grant's got it. Jimmy Clark in the last game, he had 19 points. I think they're going to do it again, and I think they're going to catch this St. Louis team off guard. They've got the rest. St. Louis doesn't, and I see a lot of offensive firepower coming from them. And like you said, they only they held them to 66 points last time. And I, like I said in the beginning of the show, you know, St. Louis is ranked high offensively. Duquesne is ranked high defensively. That's going to be the big matchup. And last time around, they won, they won that matchup. The Dukes held them to less than 70. So I think they'll do it again. I think both sides also, 
you're going to want to get out on fast break. I mean, St. Louis, they're ranked third in the A-10 with, uh, fa in fast break points with uh, a little over 12 a game. However, Duquesne leads the A-10 in fast break points with a little over 12 and a, with a little under 12 and a half points per game. Those two numbers are very similar. That's going to tell you one thing, that this is going to be a track meet. And for both sides, I mean, that's kind of their strengths. So we really could be seeing a real high-scoring matchup. I definitely think we will be, and that takes me right into my player to watch for St. Louis, and that's going to be Gibson Jimerson. You mentioned he had 26 points against URI. He is that track race type player. I believe he had around 35 minutes last time the Dukes faced St. Louis, and only he did have 12 points to show for himself in that game, but he was only 2 for 10 from 3. I'd like to see a couple more from, from him this time around. 78 threes for him. That leads the team. I think he's in a bit, of, a bit of a groove towards the end of the season, and I think he'll fare a little bit better. I'm seeing closer to a 20-point performance from him this time around against the Dukes. Yeah, Jimerson only shot 5 of 14 on that 12-point uh, performance against Duquesne on February 20th. So teams didn't are pretty familiar with each other. It hasn't been long since they last played each other. The set a neutral site. I think that uh, really St. Louis, it's it's the whole thing with the nature versus nurture thing. Right? Do you want the rest or do you want to be in that groove in that um, kind of swing of things? And I think we're going to really find out a lot about that for Duquesne because if they lose this one, second straight year in that same circumstance that they're not able to get it done, and then things start to get... Harry wants you going towards the off season. I think you're right, Jack. And Duquesne definitely is no stranger to slow starts. We've seen, yeah. we've seen no buckets scored from them in certain games until that we've seen substitutions. We've seen five minutes in, no buckets, and so I, I don't know necessarily how much I'm going to be able to tell what what that is a product of in this game, if it's the rest that they've had and them not being in the groove, or if that's just typical Duquesne ball and we'll watch them get into that groove. But you're right. I think that those first few minutes, that first quarter is going to be really big for this game. A couple of guys to watch out for for St. Louis. You got uh, guys like Sincere Parker, who against Duquesne last time out, they, he only scored four points. And then in yesterday, it, excuse me, the first time, that these two teams played, um, or excuse me, the first time that Rhode Island played St. Louis, um, Sincere Parker had 16 points. He had to be foreseen if he will play in that Duquesne game because he hasn't played since May, or excuse me, March 2nd, rather. The guy who has played and who has excelled, especially in last night's game against Rhode Island, was Terrence Hargrove Jr. And uh, Hargrove, he put up 18 points on 6 of 9, shooting at 36 minutes in the win over Rhode Island yesterday. And he's playing pretty pretty good basketball. I mean, on the year, he is averaging 13.2 points per game. But against Dayton on, May, on March 5th, he put up 17 points. On March 9th against Bonaventure, he put up 17. He's got a you know, stretch of 17 points, 17 points, 18 points. That's a pretty good stretch to be on. And as a player, I mean, that's got to really give you a lot of more momentum heading into the next game, right? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely the consistency we see it that can catch teams like URI off guard like that. You know, when you get moment, we talk about momentum this whole show. When you start getting it going in a game and in an entire season, it's when you can catch people off guard. And in the past, that's what has kind of caught the Dukes off guard. So hopefully this time around they respond to that, but it's definitely something that they're going to see from St. Louis, no doubt. Absolutely. It's going to be interesting to see, especially you talked about Duquesne with their slow starts and how they're going to need to have someone to be there to be the crutch on offense and get things going early. And you talked about Clark. You talked about you talked about uh, Day Day Grant. Um, but I don't think David Dixon gets enough credit for the energy that he brings. But I think a guy like Dave Dixon really can get active on the boards. And Horchich, you know, he might start this game. Depends on who knows where it's going to go. I mean, last time they played, it was Dave Dixon who got the start. And Dixon, you know, when you go up against a more agile center like this, like St. Louis has, that's where you'll see Dave Dixon get a lot of minutes. And he did get a lot of minutes. And the game against St. Louis, but he only put up two points. 
However, his two blocks and two seals were pretty important. He does more stuff that doesn't really pop out on the on the box score, but it's still there and it still matters. And I think he's going to be a big part in uh, Duquesne's game plan against St. Louis. Another guy, I think we should bring up. We're talking about um, intensity that uh, he brings to the court. Jake DeMichael. Yeah, how about him? I, we've talked about him a couple times on these pregame shows, but I mean, it's it's worth mentioning again how much he means to this team. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Jack. If you're going to talk about intensity and energy, you have to throw Jake DeMichael's name into that conversation. I mean, the walk on has been. He's been fantastic this year. Not in, oh, yes. I mean, the way he stepped into himself as a D1 basketball player has just been so fun to watch. It's been fun for us to watch, Duquesne fans to watch. It's been fun for all the players. You see it on their faces. And when he's out there, there's just a different energy on that court. And walking around, taking photos at the game, I hear it all the time. I hear the chatter from the fans talking about this kid and what he's gonna be and what they've seen from him he's just such an exciting player to have and we do have a lot of guys like that that really let their personality show on the court and that's honest I mean that's when we're thriving is when everyone's having they're having fun out there and they're smiling and that's when I mean Dave's got the biggest smile on that court (laughs) there's no bigger smile than when Dave Dixon posters somebody and I think if they can all work together to get that that uh momentum of energy going that's going to be big for them in this game absolutely i think i think most of all it's just you got to get going early i think that i think that becomes the big key to the game you can't fall behind early that's when they're going to start to face some trouble because st louis well oil machine already there they play the game they're well in motion they're ready to take on the challenge of playing all these games in however many days they're ready they've been ready since monday really Duquesne just got down to uh, Brooklyn today. So, I mean, I think it's going to be very interesting to see how this one starts, and I think Duquesne needs to get off to a big start. Now, we're going to move towards our picks. The winner of this one will go on to play Dayton. No ands, ifs, or buts. It will either be St. Louis versus Dayton, and St. Louis, in their two matchups against Dayton, they lost on the road 70-65. to and It's not bad to lose to a team like Dayton on the road by only five. Their second matchup came at home. Didn't go as well as the first one did. They lost 183, and so they're gonna have a tough. To, they're gonna have a tough matchup if they were to advance through Duquesne. They have a tough one with the Dukes as it is. As for Duquesne, if they win, obviously they go on to play Dayton as well. And Duquesne, the two times they played Dayton, they were in it for for well through the 10 minute mark of the second half each time. And Duquesne just gonna have to figure out figure out a way. Regardless, it's tough to, t- to beat a team three times in a season. So that's what uh, these two teams are going to be holding on to um, as they look forward towards Dayton. But first, they got to win this one. The season hangs in the balance. Who moves on, Dylan? I think it's going to be the Duquesne Dukes, Jack. I've been talking highly about them all show. And just a week ago, St. Louis was giving up 100 points, 94 points. I see a very big offensive performance from the Dukes. I see a big day from Jimmy Clark, Day-Day Grant. I see 80 points from the Dukes. I think it's going to be a comfortable victory, 70 for St. Louis. The Dukes move on for me. Uh, It sure would help the the heart rates of um, uh, the Duquesne fans. (laughs) They've they've been through some um, tight games this year, and I'm sure they would like to to see that happen. However, I don't think it's going to be as close. I think I think St. Louis has been playing some good basketball offensively, and Duquesne's defense can get a little disinterested at times. At times, there will be some stretches where they're not playing their best defense. But and also, I mean, Kareem Rozier is hobbled up. I mean, he's gonna he expects to play, but at the same time, that's still you're dealing with an injury. Might not bring that same intensity, but. It's going to be Duquesne that gets this win. I think they come out on top, and Day-Day Grant in what could be some of his final college basketball games of his career. He's going to come up big um, in this one. I think he puts up I think he puts up 25. He doesn't quite put up a 30 bomb like he did last time, but I think 25 is a nice round number, and I think the Dukes, the Dukes win by seven. That'll do it for this edition of the Duquesne Sports pregame show. I've been your host, Jack Morgan. Dylan Fisher, thanks for joining me. Have a great one, everyone. Enjoy the game.